effects of China's economy trigger another Asian financial crisis? A compelling question indeed to explore. The Chinese Communist Party finds itself in a predicament. Economically speaking, the impact of decades of ideological opposition to the most basic principles of market economics has left China's economy seemingly in shambles. China's growth is predicated on tens of trillions of dollars in unrepayable debt, which could lead to the collapse of China's financial system, affecting most Asian countries. An Asian financial crisis, 2.0, originating from China rather than Thailand, could be on the horizon. The situation is reminiscent of the Asian financial crisis that began in Thailand in 1997. Now, China's currency is weakening against the dollar, and its stock and real estate markets are feeble. A foreign exchange reserve shortage could lead to balance of payment problems and a banking crisis. Beijing, according to its own reported data, is downplaying the situation, claiming things aren't as bad as they seem in terms of unemployment and company surveys. However, international investors have already taken action, heightening the risk of a contagion effect of the Chinese crisis. On August 24, based on lower earnings and valuation expectations, Morgan Stanley downgraded the MSCI China Stock Index's target price by 14%. On the same day, Goldman Sachs warned of a potential spillover effect on other Asian countries, excluding Japan, drastically reducing the target price of the Asian MSCI Index, excluding Japan. This includes Australia, Malaysia and Hong Kong, all of which are connected to China. The economic news from China is gloomy, with deflation and a decline in international trade. The most serious issue is that local government shadow bonds worth tens of trillions of yuan could become non-performing loans. Since the financial crisis of 2008, the Chinese Communist Party has allowed city and provincial governments to borrow $9 trillion in off-balance sheet debt for the construction of bridges, roads, water plants, and impressive high-speed railways. This has driven astonishing growth, earned the party international praise, attracted massive investment into China, and promoted this model internationally through the Belt and Road Initiative. However, in China, the pensions for the elderly are only $25 to $410 per month. Public health insurance pays less than half of people's medical expenses. Unemployment insurance is about $220 per month, while the average level in the United States is close to $1,700. This lack of social security system affects the confidence of Chinese consumers. China's shadow poverty and shadow debt problem lie in the opacity of the Chinese communist regime and the so-called economic growth. Particularly, local government infrastructure construction is mainly funded by off-balance sheet debt borrowed by local government financing platform companies. These projects rarely turn a profit, but they do provide local officials with ample bribes. However, since 2020, when Beijing tried to limit local shadow debt, China's real estate market has declined and major developers have fallen into crisis. Evergrande is applying for bankruptcy in the United States, and Country Garden is close to defaulting on its first bond for the rest of this year, amounting to $2.9 billion. Due to a drop in land and housing sales coupled with unexpected pandemic spending, local government revenue has decreased making it difficult to pay the interest on the city investment bonds. Bond payments are still ongoing, but repayment of short-term debt has begun to become problematic. Last year, about half of the cities in China could barely pay the interest. If city investment bonds default, the first to feel the pain will be Chinese investors. According to Bloomberg, all types of financial institutions are involved with them commercial banks through their wealth management departments, insurance companies, mutual funds, securities firms, and hedge funds. The vast majority of their investors are locals, as foreigners find city investment bonds opaque and difficult to analyze. But as Goldman Sachs pointed out, international investors also have concerns, especially those Asian countries that have close economic ties with China. According to Bloomberg's report on August 23rd, if $2 trillion of local government bonds default, nearly half of China's domestic corporate bond market, it will disrupt China's $6 trillion financial system, causing a global shock. Economists in Thailand warn that the collapse of Evergrande alone has already severely affected Thailand's exports of building materials and tourism revenue. China is Thailand's largest export market and source of tourists. Beijing's response is to allow provinces to include some debts in their balance sheets. This could reduce market risks and lower the risk of shadow defaults and contagion. 
Some investors, including international investors, are calling for more government stimulus measures. They threaten that if the government does not provide more subsidies, they will not return to China. However, these subsidies, which do not follow market principles, are the cause of China's economic problems. These investors are after short-term profits. They are not concerned with China's long-term economic strength, which can only be based on increased political and market freedom, not more subsidies under communist guidance. In the long run, freedom, not dictatorship, slavery, communism, taxes and subsidies will create international trade and a strong economy, raising China's shockingly low living standards. The value of freedom can be seen in prosperous economies such as the United States, Europe, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and free Hong Kong, may it rest in peace, including the lessons from China. Prosperity follows freedom. To sum it up, the Chinese economy's potential collapse could trigger another Asian financial crisis. The root causes of China's economic situation include decades of ideological opposition to basic market economics, unrepayable debt, weak social security system, and shadow debt. The potential impacts include a financial system collapse affecting most Asian countries and a global shock if local government bonds worth $2 trillion default. The solution lies in freedom, not more subsidies under communist guidance.